Welcome to a very special Montober movie review. Today I'm revealing the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Not every day you get to watch, let alone reveal a hundred year old movie, and I gotta say, this movie does have mind blowing visuals, but to top it off with the knowledge that you're watching a hundred year old movie is even more mind blowing. There might be some mild spoilers for this 100-year-old movie, but I'm going to be vague because I want you to see this movie and I want you to go into it blind. The film obviously came out in 1920 and used a German expressionist style, which is just visually striking. In fact, Tim Burton fans can see where he got some of his visual stylings from. And it's, like, biz bizarre in the best way, like, light and shadows are painted on walls and floors, doors are anything but rectangle, windows are anything but square, even the pane in the windows is anything but straight. It's always angled, and some of the windows seem to even point to key details in a scene. The plot centers around... A doctor using, uh, and I'm probably butchering this word, Sambalist or Sleepwalker. He has like this sideshow with the Sleepwalker where he's supposedly been sleeping for all 23 years of his life. And through hypnosis he can briefly wake him and the Sleepwalker can tell your future. And he uses the Sleepwalker to kill people. Which also, 1920, this may be the first proto-slasher. Because this does have slasher elements, as well as arguably the first true horror movie. You had a lot of movies that could be considered horror before then. But this is the first time all the elements really came together into one film that is still a sight to behold to this day. Granted, you do have to be in the right mindset for a silent film, but if you're willing to let yourself get into that mindset and just let yourself get immersed into this movie, it will have you in a trance, as well as even some of the early... some of the earliest examples of, like, of... Other things we know in film today, like framing devices, like it begins with two people talking on a bench and that goes into the ending. This is the first flashback movie. So it's influential in a lot of ways. As well as the silent actors, you can tell they're doing a good job and silent acting is a whole art form in itself if you'd look and you see like a lot of actors in silent films they may have what we would consider over exaggerated expressions but that's the art of silent film acting now with the advent of sound if someone wants to be terrified they don't have to oversell it and they could just scream or shout in that cells that they're scared but in a silent movie you can't hear that so the actor has to have a more exaggerated expression of shock to sell his performance because it's visual based acting even then if there you were lucky enough to see this movie in the theater with music there was someone somewhere in the theater with an organ or piano playing sheet music to the movie. So I'm sure there are people who didn't even get to see this movie with music in the day. As well as this movie's free to watch on YouTube, you might have to do some digging for a decent enough copy that's been restored because there's a couple cop videos in some rough shape, which 100-year-old movie... It's a miracle this movie still exists. As well as this film has 
politic might have some political aspects to it like it's believed that Dr. Caligari represents totalitarianism and the Nazi movement and one of the evidence one piece of evidence supporting that is that there's a scene where one of Caesar's victims holds his hands out like this and it's the one shot that stands out most in the movie because it's just a close-up of the hands. But it seems to be hearkening to a actual political poster in Germany of the time of a hand outstretched and it opposing the Nazi, the growing Nazi movement. As well as it also has some commentary on the current German government too in... If you believe that these political statements are in the film, it pe it places neither the Nazi movement or the current German government in a favorable light. And Caesar, they believe, is meant to represent the regular German person who's basically a slave to the will of corrupt government or totalitarianism but that's a debate for a whole other time this is a film also that it's a film you watch for the experience not just the experience of seeing the bizarre surreal expressionist the german expressionist imagery which the german expressionism by the way it's also done on the text cards because again silent movies when we wanted to know what the plot was it would show a scene that cut to a text card that had the dialogue on it even the writing on the text card is done in the surreal style but you also want as of now you watch this movie for the experience of just knowing you're watching a hundred year old movie we do have other movies getting close to that day Nosferatu, uh, Frankenstein, Dracula, The Mummy, King Kong are all give and take a few ye give or take a few years. I mean, give or take a few years from a decade away from being a hundred years old, but they're not quite there yet, so it's is something that's going to become more common here shortly to see a hundred year old film but as of right now there's not too many and the experiences the knowledge of it is quite mind-blowing i do highly recommend this film it truly is a masterpiece i used to think nosferatu was the quintessential silent horror film and don't get me wrong, that's still a masterpiece, but Nosferatu has nothing on Caligari. If I were to give this film a rating, it would be... Now, I've talked enough about this film. You really need to go out and see it yourself. I could have gone full spoiler for a hundred-year-old movie, but this is one case where I feel I'd be doing a disservice and you just really need to see it for what it is. So like, share, comment, subscribe, over and out.